who do you think are the winners are right now? Who's getting it right? Because that'll give yeah. us a real insight as to well, what's me, going I, wrong with the others. Well, I'm going to give you guys <laughs> like a big story here. When I, when I turned over the CEO reins to Jeff Gannett, I would never purchased a retail stock. I just thought it was sacrilegious to own anybody else's stock except for Macy's. And I bought Walmart. Target and Home Depot. Those are the three that I that I bought. And what about I'm, Macy's? Well, I had, I'm, think I'm still the largest shareholder of Macy's. I'm doing okay <laughs> there, so I got plenty of uh, plenty at stake there. But those are the three retailers that I that I bought, and I'm ha happy to say I think it, they're all three doing extremely well, not yeah. just on their stock price, but I think they're just performing well with the consumer. What is it about what they're doing that that's right? Starts with leadership. I I, I really like uh, uh, particularly Doug Doug McMillan, Brian Cornell. I think those two. Uh, uh, individuals are, are terrific leaders, and I and I sort of bet on people as well as companies, and and I think those two uh, had some good ideas. They're changing, Melissa. They're investing in the future. They're 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 trying things that may not work, but uh, but you got to try them and see how the con and don't decide yourself. Let the consumer decide if it's going to work or not. Both of those cases, the consumers responded positively, and I think Home Depot's just been on a terror and just been on a positive run. What, what's happened? So, to Macy's, though. What's, yeah. The stock's the worst performer in the S&P 500 this year, I, No, I know. If I you're the biggest it. shareholder, I then you're, feel get, it, okay? you're getting whacked, and I'm not trying to pile on, but yeah. this is an iconic brand with many iconic locations. What's happened? Yeah. So, listen, I'm going to start with the industry because it, everybody's been whacked. Macy's harder than others, but, but everybody's been whacked. I think Northern's whacked. I think Kohl's is whacked. I think all, all of them have been, been hit hard. There's too much retail space in the United States. There's way too much retail space. This has been a problem for a long time, but the bubble burst when the online business got, started aggressively growing. Think about it this way. 20% of the businesses, uh, of apparel businesses now sold online. Well, 20% of the stores haven't gone away, and the, and the total pie isn't growing. So, so something's got to give, right? So, so business is just being transferred in terms of consumers from one pocket to another, or one purchasing behavior to another, and that, that's part of it. And then the off-price business has been growing aggressively. So consumers are saying, you know, a lot of these brands look familiar to me. They're, they look similar, maybe a, maybe a different label on it, but it still says this brand and that brand. I'll buy there and that's good enough. So the business has been caught, cut up quite aggressively. And so you put that consumer behavioral change with too much retail space, and I think you have the formula for a need to change and a need to contract. Macy's did close 20% of their stores uh, before, before I left. And that was a good start, I think. I think retail needs to make that adjustment as well. You're starting to see it with Sears Maybe, maybe it's going to be a lot more than 20 percent. The Barney situations for talk about a range of uh, top to bottom. So I think you're starting to see that pullback. It's going to take some time. How many more stores need to be closed before we're not overstored anymore? Uh, quite a bit. Now, America can afford to have more stores than our competitors. We buy more. We spend more, but not five times more than Europe. So, so we've got a long way to go, I think, before for this to take place. But I think it's happening. And I think the mall developers are, are aggressively pursuing this, too. I think the, the good malls are going to continue to be good malls and they're investing in other ones to try to make them better. They're changing what's in the shopping center. It's got, it's got athletic uh, uh, equipment now. Or got, it's, got, it's got sports. It's got, it's got food. It's, it's got entertainment. And I think all those are, are, are good adjustments that people are making now to bring this business back uh, to where does, supply and demand needs to be. Does the whole experience, though, need to change? I mean, in, in five years, does going into Macy's, is that going to mean something different from what it means today? Because I, I personally so. don't go into Macy's. Because it's a, it's a pain in the neck to navigate. If I want to it's buy too a big. Couple, it's too big. Well, they're talking about one store. Macy's has 500. They're not, they're not all a million square feet. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. But in general, department stores in general, yes. it takes longer to navigate to get what I want. Yeah, I told, and I totally get that and I totally understand. But, you know, this is a difference because when I was growing up, you didn't have an iPhone in your hand that could give you all of the, re the search data to tell you where you're going to go and what store you wanted to, uh, to, to go to and what price you wanted to pay. This is all available to you now. So your, shorter, your, your shopping time can be much more con uh, con uh, condensed now because you, you've done your research. You can go in and you can make your purchase and go. There's two, two things I want to address. We had a, we had a guest on, Liz Dunn. Uh, you might know her, pro former research, former Wall Street analyst. Uh, she made a comment that it's not just the industry, that, that for years you guys had bad relationships with your vendors. I want you to listen to her and then respond if okay. you don't mind, Terry. Sure. They um, were adversarial to their vendor 
partners. So I think that's a big, big thing. They did not focus enough on product and they didn't focus enough on being a supportive environment for their vendor partners to thrive. And so when that relationship got strained, many of the vendors said, well, hey, I'll just open up my own stores. I'll focus on my own DTC. And once they lost the vendors, the retailer became, Macy's became not a place that people go to discover fashion or products. Hmm. Well, I can only say, and I, I, I want to make sure I don't come off defensive. I, I may, but I'm going to give it a shot. I just want you to know that vendors didn't seem to have any problem whatsoever when we were the top performing retailer in America in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, and, and 15. So the vendors were very happy because we were their, their largest. Mm -hmm. Now, when business gets soft, their business gets soft because we're their, their, their largest partner. So when they ad, ad, added distribution to off-price channels and the consumer was choosing between this and that, it became a bit of a challenge. And now, when those start to hit a wall as well, and their business dif it becomes difficult, it does become strange. Not with just Macy's, by the way, with, but with, with everyone. Well, one more here, because your market cap, the market, not yours, the market cap of Macy's is about five and a half yes, billion exactly. dollars. Yes, exactly. Five and a half billion. Starboard Value Partners, a hedge fund, I think two or three years ago, had a report that showed they estimate the real estate of Macy's. Now, this was a couple years ago. So right. I'm just throwing them at 20 billion. I remember. Let's I say there. that let's say they're wrong by a couple billion. That would still imply the real estate is worth three times more than the operating company. How do you value the real estate at Macy's? Well, I think that there was lots of discussion about that, and they did leave uh, the, the stock, and I don't believe they left with a, a profit, because as, as we stood side by side, and by the way, I learned a lot through that process. Uh, they taught me a lot, and the fact is, is that we didn't need as much real estate as we had. We ended up selling our, one of our San Francisco locations and consolidating the inventory into two for a couple hundred million dollars. And so, and, and we turned that right around for investing in the stores and giving it back to shareholders. So we learned a lot from, from that experience. Having said that, they were, they were definitely incorrect about their overall assumptions because what are you going to do if you sell a store in a mall? What are you going to turn it into, an apartment building? You know, so you, you know, there wasn't really a buyer on the other side for those transactions. And so that's why that theory wasn't necessarily a good one.